Okay, good morning. So, time for, for Fusion now. Um, so, I, I will report on two uh, main challenges that we have in this uh, scientific challenge regarding Fusion which uh, within ECHO2, which are the interplay between the core and the edge of the plasma and the, the shaping. So, I will discuss a little bit the physics that we want to address and the numerical issues which are associated with them. So, you can see the uh, the overall framework we're involved in, which is the eater side close to Cadarache in France, at Cadarache actually, not on the uh, CEA side, but just uh, outside. Um, so first, uh, a few a brief, uh, brief recall of the, the basics regarding fusion. The fusion on Earth deals with the, the fusion of uh, hydrogen isotopes, which are deuterium and tritium, which have the highest reactivity uh, and they produce a neutron and an alpha particle or a helium-4 particle uh, and the, the, the energy gain comes from the kinetic energy of, those of the, the two particles. Uh, to reach the fusion you need high temperature which is uh, 10 times larger than the one in the core of the Sun so it's 10 to the 8 Kelvin which is 15 uh, keV roughly and it's very low density so density is 10 to the 20 particles per cubic meter and this is roughly the pressure in the end high temperature low density the pressure that you have in the tires of your bicycle five atmospheres um, to reach fusion and for it to be uh, economical economically viable then you you need to confine the electrons and the ions which are decoupled uh, at this at those temperatures and for this you need a, a quite complex magnetic geometry which look like this actually the field lines are helicals which are uh, on uh, magnetic flux of faces donut like uh, which are nested uh, and in real life it looks like this so this is the inside of the uh, the largest tokamak uh, so far which is a European one based uh, uh, close to Oxford in the UK so it's JET, Joint European Taurus. So you can see the uh, in vessel, the inside of the vessel, and this is a, a, a visible light that comes out from the, the plasma. So mainly you see the edge because the, the core at those temperatures is radiating in X, uh, X rays. Uh, and one of the issues regarding this, uh, those plasma is the interaction with the wall that takes place uh, at the edge. So the edge is low temperature, uh, while the core is uh, at the fusion temperature, 10 keV. So you have uh, several orders of magnitude in between. Uh, and the location where the uh, plasma wall, uh, the interaction between the plasma and the wall takes place, uh, this is also the place where you have to exhaust all the heat that, you, that comes out from the plasma. And the, the location where you, uh, the, the fueling, the particle fueling uh, comes in. There are a number of uh, numerical challenges associated with this. So the interplay, the edge does interplay with the core plasma and you want a good confinement in the core. So how do the, those two regions interplay with each other? Uh, and at the edge, the geometry becomes much more complicated than in the core. So to address those issues within ECHO, this is uh, where we have. We have uh, first a flagship code to address the uh, uh, the transport and the dynamics of the plasma in the core. So this is called Gisela for gyrokinetic semi-Lagrangian. Semi-Lagrangian is the numerical scheme and gyrokinetic is the uh, physical framework, uh, the, the kind of equations we are solving. They are five-dimensional. I will come back on this issue. Uh, the labs involved are uh, CARRFM, which is Institute for Research on uh, Control uh, Fusion. Uh, and Maison de la Simulation, so which develop uh, in collaboration Gisela, and we have also collaboration with IPP Garking and Safax for those uh, uh, on those issues. Uh, roughly, the number of uh, uh, CPU hours we we use per year. So this is the uh, consumption in logarithmic scale in millions of CPU hours from the very start of the development of Gisela, and we are here. So you can see that we have roughly. Uh, of the order of uh, 100 million CPU hours per year 
uh, the number of grid points for large simulations in the five dimensional phase space is uh, uh, 100 uh, billions. Uh, and the scaling efficiency has reached nine for the weak scaling 91% on uh, roughly uh, 500 kilo cores and for the strong scaling uh, 60% on a bit less uh, 65 kilo cores. Uh, we have also companion codes to address this, uh, those issues. Uh, first, reduced kinetic models uh, to uh, to study the, uh, the optimization of the various solvers to solve the, the equations uh, and develop or optimize also the numerical schemes. Uh, IPP gawking and collaboration with Cefax are involved in this activity. And we have also a three-dimensional fluid code called TOCAM 3X, um, uh, which solved the edge turbulence and the flows and the interaction with the wall. So this will help uh, kind of uh, validating and benchmarking the kind of result that we can get with this uh, more advanced and kinetic codes. So for this, there's a collaboration between our institute at Kadarash, ULB and INIRIA. Uh, regarding the, uh, the people, uh, we have a number of postdocs founded by ECO. Uh, two uh, are or will uh, start uh, soon, have started and will start uh, beginning of next year. And there are three open positions. Uh, so the uh, proposals have been issued already and we're looking for, uh, for people. Uh, we have also additional resources uh, coming from other founding. Uh, one, uh, an engineer working uh, in, the, uh, in one of the uh, supercomputer in France, uh, in Montpellier, Dorian Midiou, uh, collaborating with us. And we have also PhD thesis, so one founded by uh, the H2020 numerics uh, uh, program uh, with uh, she will start uh, next, uh, well, e within a few months, and we have an opposite position uh, half founded by uh, ECO that should start uh, beginning next year. So let's come to the, uh, the first uh, issue, which is the interplay between the edge and the core. So, so, so far, uh, Gisela is uh, so gyrokinetic code, three dimensional in configuration space and two-dimensional in velocity space, addressing mainly electrostatic core turbulence, so the hot region of the plasma. Um, the limitations are the following. It, it deals with closed magnetic surfaces, which are two-dimensionally periodic. Uh, the boundary of the, those um, uh, magnetic surfaces is treated via kind of a slightly artificial buffer regions, essentially for numerical reasons to dump out the fluctuations at the edge. Uh, and the geometry is restricted to a circular one. So we want to alleviate those limitations in ECHO2. Uh, this means dealing with uh, plasma wall interaction and having more physical boundary conditions and moving from circular to arbitrary shape plasma and so being able to address it like shapes, for instance. Uh, this has a, a number of uh, issues, as we I will discuss a little bit uh, later on. The core edge interplay requires a very large grid in X and V, much larger than the one we are dealing with so far. Uh, the wall will be treated via immersed boundaries. So we have some expertise, especially with uh, one of the companion codes, TOCAM 3X, which has already implemented this kind of uh, boundaries uh, in the fluid framework. Uh, the, the ions and the electrons have to be treated kinetically. Uh, and this has memory and CPU time uh, footprint uh, issues. And also we want to move from the electrostatic uh, uh, modeling to the electromagnetic, meaning that electromagnetic means that the magnetic field fluctuations are taken into account. So far, we, we assume that the magnetic field is frozen, as given by the, uh, uh, the equilibrium configuration. But moving toward the edge requires accounting for these uh, uh, additional physics, so it requires re refined physics. 
Uh, regarding so the uh, moving from the core to the edge, uh, as I said, the uh, temperature is varying by uh, several orders of magnitude. And then this has uh, both a spatial and uh, a velocity resolution issues. Uh, regarding space, the turbulent structures scale like the, uh, what is called the uh, ion cyclotron radius, which scales like the square root of the temperature. So this means that the grid size scales also like the square, square root of the temperature. And so if you look at uh, the temperature versus the normalized, normalized radius, so this is the hot core and this is the edge, oops, the edge here interacting with the, the wall. So you see that you, you start from the uh, 15 keV down to a few electron volts here. And in logarithmic scale, this is what you, what you get. So far, we are dealing with this region, and we want to move toward the edge. And you can see that if you normalize your radius to the scale that you have to solve, to resolve, which is the ion lama radius, then uh, we need so far a few hundreds of uh, grid points, but moving toward the edge requires a lot more. So you increase by... Uh, by, um, by orders of magnitude. So this is a real challenge and the way we, we plan to address it is by using multi-radial patches and especially, uh, well, more technically using mapping. But this has also consequences regarding the velocity resolution because the, the velocity uh, and the uh, distribution function scales like the thermal velocity. So in the core, if I, I plot the Maxwellian distribution function as a function of the velocity here, in the hot core, you, you would have uh, this kind of uh, distribution function in logarithmic scale here, and in the edge, something which is really narrow. But you want to resolve them very finely because uh, this is the equilibrium-like shape, but when turbulence develops, you want to be able to resolve the fine structures. So you need a, a very small uh, grid in velocity to resolve those this blue one up to this uh, red one. Ideally, we would like to, uh, to use multi-velocity patches, the same as for radial, but due to the, uh, the lack of human resources, the fact that uh, Guillaume Latu uh, left the project, then we, we will actually cope with that by just brute force and increase the number of grid points. Okay, so and this will bring us toward the exact scale more easily. So they, they will part of uh, effort developing this uh, activity, but not this one. Um, the, the second issue we want to address deals with the, the plasma shape. And the reason is the, as the following. So, so far, this is what we call a poroidal cross-section. So a cut of the, uh, the torus. The torus uh, goes like this. And so far, Gisela can cope with uh, this circular cross-section, but this is not the majority of the Tokamax which deal with this kind of, of uh, sections. Uh, there is some ellipticity and some triangularity. And actually, some Tokamax around the world are able to run from uh, this to this uh, shape. And it turns out that they observe some strong modification of the uh, confinement properties of the plasma. And th this is a recent example published in PRL in this year. Uh, so that, that was already identified a, in a previous study in a, a Swiss uh, Tokamak, where you can see this is the confinement. Confinement is degrading when you move this way. Uh, and this, uh, on the x-axis, this is a measure of the inverse of the collisionality. So just keep in mind that moving this way downwards and to the right brings you towards ether, like plasma, and the region where you want to be because you have good confinement. And you can see that by changing the, the triangularity, moving from a, a D-shape to an inverse D-shape, so what we call a negative triangularity, then you, you move downwards, which is a good thing. Uh, this has been confirmed on uh, another Turkomac, uh, where they understood this uh, 
improve of, of confinement experimentally by the fact that the turbulence is reduced, turns out to be reduced, and you see a measure of the uh, turbulence activity as a function of the frequency. For a negative D shape, then you have a much lower uh, fluctuation than uh, for the uh, standard D shape. So ITER is uh, uh, foreseen to operate in this regime, but uh, the issue is whether we can find optimized configuration uh, by playing with the shape. And this is one of the advantages of numerical simulation is that uh, it can play more easily than experiments with the shape once you have uh, designed the, uh, uh, the vessel it's much more difficult and it requires uh, many coils to play with the shape experimentally while numerical simulation is much more easy. Uh, so I showed you one of the impact of the uh, configuration that came out quite recently but we also know from the energy confinement time scaling loads, the empirical one based on the uh, experiment that actually the, the, the shape properties, ellipticity, triangularity, do have a strong impact. Uh, so we want to address this, those issues uh, and move from a circular to an arbitrary shape. So from the physics point of view, this requires accounting for uh, the metric elements in all the equations. Uh, and from the numerical, numerical point of view, there is a change of coordinate. Uh, and the poison solver that we have to solve and one of the two equations uh, will become two-dimensional by essence. And obviously the diagnostics will need being adapted. So uh, to summarize, uh, we will move from Gisela to what we call Gisela X, which is the uh, new version of the, uh, toward the exascale of Gisela. Uh, so far we have, uh, let's say, the zero version uh, and especially we have really uh, 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 Gisela X in a good shape with uh, uh, roughly 20% lines less than Gisela. So all some uh, uh, historical developments have been uh, uh, removed. Uh, so it's much more clear and much more easy to, uh, to make new developments on this uh, new version. And the number of input, input data has been also uh, significantly reduced by uh, minus 30% uh, roughly. What is ongoing is the, uh, the treatment of the plasma wall interaction through the immersed boundary conditions. The electromagnetic equations have been derived, implemented. So the benchmark is now started, uh, starting. And what remains to be done is the uh, implementing the shaping. So this is part of the, uh, the work uh, by the uh, PhD thesis uh, and uh, kinetic electrons at the edge plus the modularity, uh, especially including PDI, uh, is something which is um, uh, going to start with uh, Maison de la Simulation. So I would say that uh, scientific challenge for fusion is, uh, is on track. Uh, just for those of you who might not have seen any movie, this is the kind of, uh, of dynamics that we want to address with, uh, with Gisela. So this is quite an old movie, but what is interesting here is that you can see the small scale structures, uh, very elongated uh, along the field lines. And you can see that the, uh, the s those structures are rotating. And actually this kind of rotation is self-generated by turbulence. So this is one of the uh, self-organization uh, of turbulence, uh, much like the, uh, the zonal bands that you can see in the atmospheres of Jupiter, for instance. Uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>